Greetings aspirants, welcome to Narayana News. This is Karthik Moni, I am here for daily news and art. For today's session, I have picked up 5 important articles from Hindu as well as Indian Express. The first article is about recent RBI intervention. So RBI intervention for ensuring the, the banking stability. So that is about the first article. The second article is about the, the recent problem of internal security issue in the Jammon Kashmir. And third article is about the India-Russia relationship. And fourth article is about decriminalizing the medical negligence. And finally, we are going to discuss the problem of spyware targeting the journalist in India. So these are the five articles which we are going to discuss today. So first we have an economics article from the Indian Express. So this article is about the recent RBI intervention to prevent the possibility of risk buildup in the banking system. So this is the article. So from the exam point of view, we have to know about what is meant by domestic systematically important banks. So we have to know about the details and also the concept behind this uh, domestic systematically important banks. That is one side. And apart from that, understanding about the current macroeconomic situation of India and also future aspirations of the India that we have to know. So, and also we have to know about how the interventions in the banking sector will lead to the aspirations that also we have to know, right? Coming to the previous year question. So, we had a question in 2015 related to the base and norms. So, after 2008, that is subprime crisis, after subprime crisis, the international effort to ensure the financial stability is very high. So, we are having an institutions, Basel committee was there, financial stability board was there and also we are taking n number of initiatives to strengthen the banking institutions. So, in this aspect, this article is very important. So, that's why we are discussing this article. Coming to the context, recently the RBI released two important reports. One is financial stability report, another one is trends and progress in banking of India. So, from the context of these two reports, we have to know about the major findings. So, major findings in the banking and financial institution that we have to know. And apart from that, major finding of the, uh, the overall economy that we have to know. And so, apart from that, we have to know about why the RBI is intervening into or RBI is changing the parameters in the domestic systematically important banks that we have to know. So first we have to know about the major findings in the financial system. So first regarding the banking institution. Yes, the performance of the banking institutions are uh, really good. So that is the major finding. So when it comes to the details, the bad loans, that is the non-performing asset, the gross non-performing asset declined from 11.6 percentage in 2018 to 3.2% in 2023. So, look at the number 11.6 to 3.2. So, there is a decline, one aspect and also we have to sensitize that the extent of decline is very high, 11% to 3%. And apart from that, the bad loans owned by the large industries. So, the bad loans owned by the large industries also reduced considerably from 22.9 percentage to 4.6 percentage which means the performance of the industries which we can expect in a very good manner so that is possible so performance of the industries or performance of the manufacturing sector is very much important for the indian economy so this is also a very good sign apart from that the profitability also increased the profitability of the banks is getting increased because of having the high interest margin so conceptual aspect, the relation between the, the interest margin and also the profitability of the banks, we have to know that. And also the profitability of the banks will give more scope or give more resilient to the banking institutions. And apart from that, having the adequate capital buffer. Yes, the financial stability report of RBI mentioned that the banking institutions in India is having adequate capital buffer which means and lending is possible for greater extent. So these are the major findings in the banking institutions. Apart from that, 
the overall financial health the financial health of the overall financial institution is also better because apart from the banking institutions nbfc's loans that is bad loans is also declined considerably even though the performance of nbfc's in reducing the bad loan is comparatively low when compared to the banks or banking institutions it is also performing which means the financial institutions as a whole is performing good so here why we need for the healthy banks why the performance of banking institutions is very important because the banking institutions are very important for the credit so in order to expand the credit for the credit expansion the healthy banking institutions and healthy banking atmosphere is very much important so increasing the investment uh, increasing the credit possibility will increases the investment increasing the investment will ensure the possibility of sustaining the the growth in india so next we have to know about the major findings in the overall economy so as of now the balance sheet of the financial institutions are good yes the banking institutions the non performing assets reduced or declined to the considerable extent that is there and second aspect the domestic financial systems are resilient in nature which means the possibility or ability of the banking institutions to meet the minimum requirement of the capital risk weighted asset ratio is possible so which means they are resilient the capital is adequate enough so that is there and third aspect the inflation is also in the safe limit and also improving the external sector yes the service sector is performing good and also the the import cost of the oil is getting cheaper so this facilitate the external sector and finally so government is also continuing the the physical consolidation policy as a whole the performance of the macro economic fundamentals are resilient in nature in, a, in the indian economy so that we have to highlight but there is a question that why rbi is strengthening the uh, the domestic systematically important banks norms so that we have to know so still there is a question why even though the performance is good even though the macro economic indicators are performing good the rbi is intervening into the the banking institutions that we have to know. the first reason is that the external uncertainty so yes india is performing good but the global level the performance is not good so the availability the cost of getting investments is very high the interest rate in the global arena is comparatively high and also the global level the economic fragility is there the economic uncertainty is there so because of the geopolitical issues so that we have to highlight and apart from that in the india in the domestic itself we are facing the problem of unsecured retail loans so increasing risk of falling into the trap of unsecured retail loans is also there and finally india is aspiring for new heights we are aspiring for more yes we are doing good but we are aspiring for something good so coming to the future aspirations the first aspiration is durable price stability yes even today the inflation is in the safe limits but here the aspiration is that we have to sustain this inflation for so long so that is the major and first important criteria because the impact the role of inflation in interest rate and consequential impact on interest and then consequential impact on the growth is very high that's why the price stability are bringing durability in the price is very much important the second aspiration is ensuring mid term debt sustainability so debt sustainability is very important because the debt the extent of debt which we are having is very much important or having its role in physical policy so having a sustainable debt will give more physical space to the government so that government can work on the developmental aspects that is there and apart from that further strengthening the financial sector resilient yes financial institutions the performance of the banking institutions and nbfcs are good but apart from that we have to even have to further 
strengthen the financial institutions. Yes, as of now, the non-performing asset is somewhere around 3.2. So even this is possible to bring down to 2.5 percentage in near future. That is possible. So strengthening the financial uh, sector resilience is also an another uh, important aspiration. And finally, creating new avenues or new opportunities for the growth. So at the end of the day, as an economy, India is aspiring for high growth and also India is aspiring for sustaining the high growth. For these two aspirations, we have to create new opportunities for the development for the economic. So for that, these are the aspirations. So for those aspirations, the RBI is taking precautionary measures. Yes. The intervention is early and also decisive that RBI wanted to curb any possible risk buildup in the near future. So that's why this intervention has to be seen as a precautionary measure from the regulatory agency. Coming to the domestic systematically important banks, yes, it is a categorization of banks. So we have n number of banks, yes. So within that, we are categorizing few banks, few banks as important, systematically important. Why we are categorizing this as systematically important? Because the health of the bank of such institutions and such banks are very much important because it is having a larger impact to the economy, right? So these institutions, the systematically important banks are too big and and also, because of being big, there is a possibility of failure of such banks will be there. And this is highly evident from the 2008 subprime crisis. So, institutional failure created a huge financial instability in the global arena in 2008. So, that's why the health of financial institutions, that too, especially the health of the banking institutions are very much important. So, that's why we are categorizing some banking institutions, some banks as domestic systematically important banks. So here, first, the regulatory agency will assess some banks and also they'll classify and assert the banks in some categories and also they'll give some imperatives and then some directions and also finally, when those banks are in trouble, they will assist. So these are the four areas we have to highlight. The first aspect, assessment. Yes, currently we are having three banks. One public sector bank, that is SBA, State Bank of India, and two other private sector bank, that is HDFC and also ICICI. So RBA, the regulatory body, identified three major banks as domestic systematically important banks. In the first case, and then it classified it into different ranges. Right? So, as of now, the SBI is categorized under the buckets three, and in near future, that is after 2025, April 1, 2025, it will be moved to the higher bucket, that is the bucket four. And apart from that, HDFC, as of now, it is in the bucket one. So, after April 1, 2025, it will be moved to the bucket 2. And finally, for ICICA, it's still, it's retaining the same position of first bucket. So, here, the bucket means, so lower the number. For example, if the bucket number is 1, which means the measures, the measures are little less. The imperatives are comparatively low. Whereas, when it considers the, the bucket 5, the imperatives for those banks are very high. So, imperatives, so for the bucket 5, so the banks, the institutions have to have additional 1% as tire on capital in the capital risk weighted asset ratio. So, already we have one ratio, one number is there. So, apart from that, from the normal number, 1% of extra capital has to be kept aside by those institutions. So, that is for the, the bucket 5. So, look at the number. So, it will keep on reducing for the, the lower numbers. So, 4, it is 0.8 percentage and 3, it is for 0.6 percentage and for bucket 2, it is for 0.4 percentage and finally, 
for the lowest bucket the banks the institutions have to keep an extra 0.2 percentage of the capital aside as a tier one capital within the capital risk weighted asset ratio right finally the assistant yes so the imperatives are precautionary measures mitigations mitigation measures to prevent any such distressful situation so even after taking such measures if some institutions went into the distressful situation then the government will give assistance to bring back to the institutions to normal so here under this systematically important banking classification so we are assessing the institutions we are assorting that is we are categorizing the institutions and are, we are giving mandate to those institutions to maintain more lending norms and finally if they went into the distressful situation the government will come into the picture to save such institutions so next we have an article reimagine the counter strike right so this is with respect to the recent ongoing problem in the jammu kashmir so two different events insurgency as a internal security problem on the one hand and then political problem that is abrogation of 370 on the other hand as a political problem and demand for the state who and also here we have to uh, see the nuanced connection between the internal security events and the political events but also we have to relate the the possible outcomes that we have to understand right so coming to the previous year question in 2020 there was a request in Uh, related to the the local support to the militants yes upsc itself stressing importance that there is a growing importance or growing concern in the jammu and kashmir that local population is supporting the militants so it is a problematic and highly concern for the internal security point of view for india so from this aspect we can also expect similar question in the upcoming examination because the recent incident is also is related to the local participation that is there coming to the context so in december 21st there was an ambush attack by the insurgent in the dkj region that is there and uh, the people's anti fascist front a militant group uh, claimed the responsibility for this attack and also uh, as a consequence as a military action some of the civilians were killed by the the rogue military officers so that is there so this is a problematic situation because it is seen as the the revenge uh, for the existing attack because uh, they found that there is a connection local participation in the uh, the recent insurgent attack and also as a revenge for the mortality of uh, some of the soldiers some of the military officers tortured some of the civilians and they were killed by the officers so then this becomes a huge issue and it retain and it gain the attention of the the defense minister and also the army chief and they comment they also made a comment that such kind of violation of human rights uh, cannot be admitted at any cost in the armed forces and also so in order to understand this problem in a larger picture so we have to know the history of militancy in the region so here in highlighting the history of the militancy in the jammu and kashmir so i'm going to highlight the two important aspect one is the area in which the militant activity is concentrated that is the first requisite that is area and second aspect the role of local population so two aspects we have to highlight so first dimension in the late 90s and also in early 2000 the acts to the valley through the peer panjal ranges was high so which means with the valley the bird valley here connotes the idea that the insurgency or the militant activity was concentrated more on the kashmir region right the northern part of the state right and also it is highlighted that the reason of geography that the thick forest and also the difficult terrain in this region facilitate the the possibility of hideouts by the militants and also the possibility of uh, attacking back is possible because of such difficult complex geological terrain right 
So here I'm highlighting that the occurrences of militancy is converging or concentrating more in the Kashmir region. That is northern part. Right? Second aspect is that the active participation of locals. Yes, the locals participated along with the Indian army to combat the militancy during the, uh, the early 2000s. Yes, it is evident from the operation uh, Sir Vinash in 2003. Uh, in this operation, the Gujaras and the Bakarwalas so supported the Indian armed forces and also they fought along with the armed forces to contain the militancy. This particular operation that in 2003. So the locals were actually giving support to the Indians, that is Indian armed forces and they were opposed to the militant activity. So these are the developments we have to know from the historical point. So area in which the, uh, the militancy is occurring and also uh, the participation or role of locals in combating the militancy. Two aspects. Now there is a shift in the hard spot. The problem, one is area aspects we are facing problem and also participation, local participation also we are facing problem. So first aspect there is an increasing pattern. The new pattern is emerged that instead of northern parts, northern Kashmir, so we are facing the increased militant activity near the southern part, that is Jammu region. So that is the problem. So it is evident from the fact that more than 50 percentage of the military personnel killed recently are from this region. So till now, that is in the, the past periods, the Srinagar and Baramula region is what the hot spot for the militant. Now the area is slowly changing it and it is moving towards the south. That is the first aspect. And also here, uh, I have to highlight the reason for the, the moving towards the south is that uh, geography and the climate. So geography and the climate is a little favorable for the extremist and the militant activities. So because it facilitates the possibility of launching all year round operations. Because in the northern region, the terrain is complex, even though it is facilitating for the hideouts. So the climate is harsh enough to not to have a militant activity during winter. So that we have to highlight. And apart from that, this recent shift has to be seen from the another dimension that the Pakistan's activities are declining in the recent years. Yes, the Pakistan itself is facing problem. It's facing the problem of uh, economic downturn and also political dust is also happening. Insta political instability is also happening. So, the Pakistan as a state itself facilitating problems internally and also it is not possible or it is having a less scope to uh, facilitate the the non-state actors are fund the non-state actors for such militant activity. So here the experts are suspicious that there is the Chinese involvement to weaken the India's presence in the Jamal Kashmir. So the, this is another dimension that we have to highlight. So area shift is there and also geography is also supporting geography and the climate of the southern that is Jammu region is facilitating the militants to have a year round attack. And also, we are seeing this from the perspective of Chinese involvement in the militant activity. So now we have to think or we have to know why it is a worry for India of increasing attack, militant attack, attack in the Rajouri and Poonch region that we have to know. So three reasons. So diverse compared to the uh, Kashmir Valley. So the Jammu region is Diverse in terms of ethnicity, diverse in terms of religion, even diverse in terms of language. So it is known for its diversity. The problem is that so it is easy for militant group to create communal tensions in a highly diverse society. So the instability or creating instability in the Jammu and Kashmir becomes very easy when compared to the Kashmir. So that is the first dimension that that has to be worried from the Indian point of view. Second aspect, backwardness. So this attack are, uh, has to be seen from the perspective that the developments 
in the Jammu region, Jammu region is comparatively low when compared to the Kashmir. And then backwardness is also one of the important parameter for the increasing militants. So that we have to address. And finally, this region is still a fertile ground for terrorists. Yes, here in this incident, this ambush incident also highlighted the involvement of the local participation. So locals, instead of supporting Indian armed forces, now they are slowly started supporting the, the militant group. So now this Jammu region is also becoming a fertile ground for terrorism. So now we have to know the worrying issues. So rising suspicion among the locals that they have to take it into account. Because the local participation is very much important. The support of locals to combat the militants is very important. So think from the case that if they are supporting or they are standing with the militants, then it will be very, it will be highly concerned for India to combat militants. So that is there. Because if you are taking actions against the locals, it will create the, the trust gap and also the distance between the people and the government will get increased. So the possibility of settling the political tussle will become a problem. And also, uh, this has to be seen from the perspective that uh, the government of India's repressive measures through the, the Chilean government, because uh, the political developments, the recent political developments, such as the abrogation of 370 and also... Uh, increased misuse of ASPA, allegations of fake killing, rape and torture. So political developments and also uh, misuse of legislations is also an important concern for a government to create mistrust among the local population. Because local population support is very much important to win over the militancy in Jammu and Kashmir. As a conclusion, so we have to win over the hearts and minds of the local population. So we want to generate trust is very much important because uh, having the support of local population is very much important to combat the militancy. So for that, we have to work on the developmental aspects. Is yes. inadequacy of the developments, economic and social developments in the Jammu region is also one of the major reasons uh, for the spreading of militancy to the Jammu region that is there. And also, Government have to act in a quicker fashion and also act in a stringent fashion to contain the misuse of armed force legislations. So that is very much important. And finally, in order to address the doubts, government have to restore the statehood and conduct election in the state and establish normalcy in the conflict ridden regions is it's also in another areas that we have to work it out. Next, we have an article related to the India-Russia relationship. The article, the not zero sum, it's taken from the, the editorial page of Indian Express. So, exam point of view, it is relevant and we have to know the, the recent outcomes of the recent Russian visit of Mr. Uh, Jay Shankar, the external affairs minister. And apart from that, we have to see and uh, we have to analyze this outcome from the perspective of the stability in the bilateral relationship on one hand and also we have to think from the perspective of India's strategic autonomy in having India's its own foreign policy national interest. So these two aspects that we have to highlight. Right? Coming to the context, uh, the recently the five-day visit by India's external minister Jay Shankar to Russia has happened and apart from that, this particular bilateral visit is very important because the Russian, this is the first time the Russian President Vladimir Putin met an official who is of lower ranking than his position. He was a president, this time he met a foreign minister, the external affairs minister from the Indian side. So this is, this has to be seen as an uh, important highlight of this visit, right? So from this context, we have to know about the the recent outcomes. Coming to the outcomes, the first and major uh, commitment between the nations is the assurance for India from the Russian side for the development of fifth and sixth reactor in the Kodamkulam nuclear power plants. So it can be seen as a one small uh, outcome from the, the bilateral relationship. But this is highly significant and it is very important. Why? Because Yes, even though India is having a civil nuclear cooperation between US, 
and France, Russia is the only country which came forward to set up a nuclear power plant in India. So it has to be seen as a very important and strategic point of view. So that's why we are celebrating even today, even though the distance between India and Russia is a little bit increasing. So even though India's uh, national interest is aligning a little bit away from the Russia, so the relationship between the India and Russia is important because in strategic areas, in strategic dimensions such as nuclear cooperation, that is civil nuclear cooperation or defense cooperation is very much important when it comes to the India-Russia relationship. So this is very important. This is very important. So as a student, we have to sensitize those important aspects in the bilateral relationship. Right? Second aspect, there is a significant emphasis in the cooperation in the space program, rocket engines, satellite navigation systems and military hardware. So here I want to highlight the important aspects of joint development. And also most importantly, Russia is willing to support India for the development of military equipments under Make in India program. So indigenous development and indigenous capacity of India for the development of such military equipments is possible. Technology transfer is possible. So these two aspects, it is highly significant. Right. So second aspect. So one is civil nuclear cooperation, first dimension. Second dimension, joint production in the aspects of military equipments. These are very two important major aspects when it comes to the India-Russia relations. So apart from that, so we also committed for the energy aspects as well. Yes. So from the Indian side, we committed that even though India diversified its energy access to from different countries, India committed that the import hydrocarbon import from the Russia will be there, even having stringent sanctions from the uh, Western nations. Right, that is also there. So this is also be one of the important aspects that we have to celebrate. Yes. So energy. In, or, in order to meet the energy needs of India. So, Russia is very important. Even though we have the many other nations, the import from the Russia is highly significant. So, that is also there. Apart from that, we also committed for many other fields such as medicine, pharmaceutical substances and medical devices were there. So, here India want to enhance the economic cooperation between the India and Russia from the advantageous positions of pharmaceutical sector of India. So, apart from concentrating only on the defense and the nuclear cooperation and also from the energy point of view, India is slowly looking for Russia as an important economic partner for many other trade related activities. So, this is also an important aspect. And apart from that, so Russia also committed that in the BRICS and also in the international forums such as the United Nations and in SEOs, he, the Russia committed to support or committed to coordinate with India in such international and regional forums. So here it is very important, even though it seems a very small, simil, simple fact, it is very important. For example, take the uh, initiative or take the groupings of BRICS, take the groupings of uh, Yes, CEO. The presence of China is there. Right. So there is a possibility of dominance of China will be there in both the BRICS, also in the uh, SC. So here, having a commitment, having a cooperation from the Russia will ensure the balanced discussion and balanced functioning of such regional grouping. So this is very important. Commitment from Russia to cooperate with India in such forums is very important. Apart from that, United Nations. Yes, Russia is the, the permanent member of UN Security Council. So India's aspirations can be put forward in the United Nations Security Council with the help of Russia. So that is also an another dimension that we have to highlight. So apart from that, resuming the annual summit, yes, it is important. So, last two years, this annual summit was not conducted. 
So in the recent summit, the, in the recent visit, the Indian side committed that the resuming the annual leadership summit will happen from 2024. And this also shows or it also signals the, the significant improvement in the, the bilateral convergence between both the nations. So these are the, some, some of the major outcomes from the recent visit. Now we have to think from the perspective of stability and strategic autonomy point of view. So now we have to know about the, the stability in the India-Russia relationship. So here, uh, the recent outcomes from the recent visit itself highlighted that the India is, the, the bilateral relationship between the countries are enduring in nature. The partnership is strengthened and it is stable in nature. Because as of now, we are experiencing the global diplomatic shift and also geopolitical tussles and the geopolitical uncertainty and the crisis is going, uh, especially when it comes to the Russia because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict and its divergence and opposition from the Western nations in major forums. So that is there. So in this occasion, so the stable enduring partnership is still visible from the recent. So that is there. And second aspect, the historical context, the historical connection between India and uh, Russia is also an one important factor to maintain the stability in the relationship. Yes, so win-win situation is there. So the, the need for India in order to counter the China or in order to have a support uh, to counter the Western uh, nations that is there. And for India, the Russia is very much needed to restore the balance in Asia. So this strategic balance is there in the uh, the previous decades as well. And this historical context is also adding an important value to the stable relationship between the nations. So that is there. And finally, the energy dependence is also one important reason for the stable relationship. Yes, look at the number. So the, the bilateral relationship went from $12 billion to $50 billion. Uh, because of the increased oil import. Yes. The problem with the India-Russian relationship is that the relationship convergence are limited only to the defense and the nuclear establishment. It's elaborating it to the other scopes of economy is also very much important. But here, the energy dependence is increasing the scope for increased relationship and this led to the stability in the India-Russia relationship. Right. And finally, strategic autonomy also we have to highlight. Yes, India is facing huge criticism from the Western nations that India is taking a nuanced, careful approach in deciding, in commenting the Ukraine crisis against Russia. So here it is showing that even though India's alliance or association with the Western nation is getting more, India is still following the strategic autonomy. Uh, in order to enhance the, the national interests. So that is there. And also, one more thing is that the recent visit comes amidst the friction of India-US relationship uh, regarding the, the Panam investigation and unresolved India-China border dispute. So here, this is highly significant. They'll see this as an important development so that this has to be seen from the perspective that this convergence between India and Russia will also help to facilitate or manage or to cope up the relationship with the US as well as China. So next we have an article related to the decriminalization of medical negligence. So the article itself it uh, mentioned about the both the views of uh, the favoring and against statements. It is there and exam point of view it is relevant. It has to be studied from the perspective of criminal risk. So, in the recent reforms in the criminal bill, sorry, by replacing the existing three colonial legislations, we are bringing new three new legislations for the criminal law that is there. So, in that prelims point of view, we can expect some specific questions related to the specific issues that is possible regarding the, the provisions and its comparison with the old one that is possible. And also, in the mains examination, we can expect some analysis on the specific issues in terms of adultery, in terms of death sentence, in terms of criminal negligence, 
So those areas, specific analytical questions we can expect. Coming to the context, in the new legislation also, we are having the provisions of criminal negligence as a, or medical negligence as a crime. So even in the IPC, we are having section 304A is there and also 338 is there. So there are two sections for the negligence, criminal negligence that will be there. So in the new updated legislation also, we are carry forwarding these some provisions related to the medical negligence. So now the debate has been initiated that having or uh, exempting the medical practitioners from such criminal punishment due to the death by the negligence. So this was the, the debate going on the the parliament. So this is the context of this article. From this context, we have to know about the provisions, recent legislative provisions on negligence. And also we have to know about the both the dimensions. Why we want the provision, why, do, why we don't want that provision. So recent changes. So the amendments to the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita Bill that alters the, the punishment for the medical negligence. I already mentioned in the Indian Penal Code, we have two sections. One is 304A was there. And apart from that, section 338 was there for punishing or citing negligence as a crime. So here, this new Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita bill also having such similar provisions. As per this new legislation, we are having section 1061 which outlines the, the punishment for causing death. So punishment for causing death, mortality should be there by rashes, that is reckless activity and also negligence. So these two, for these two, Criminal activity, we are having penal provisions under section 1061. So for recklessness, that is general cases, the imprisonment can go up to 7 years. And also for the medical, registered medical practitioners, it can go up to 2 years of imprisonment. So here, the, the registered medical practitioners means... The practitioners, the medical practitioners has to be registered with uh, 2019 bill, that is 2019 legislation, National Medical Council Act, that should be there. And apart from that, they have to be listed by the states as medical practitioners. So these two has to be there to recognize someone as registered medical practitioners. Right? So this is the new provision. So now we have to know about the points in favor of exempting the doctors from criminal prosecution. Yes. So here we have to highlight the, the Indian Medical Association's data. It highlighted few things that the death occurred by the medical negligence is 98,000. But the cases filed is somewhere around 52 lakhs. So 1 lakh, somewhere to 1 lakh deaths, mortalities are there. But the cases, look at the cases, it is 52 lakhs. There is a huge difference is there. So here it shows that the criminal prosecution has been used as a tool of harassment. Right? So next, the need for better patient care. Yes, there is a positive correlation between the exempting the doc doctors from the criminal procedures to the outcomes in the patient care. That is there. So here it is related that the fear of criminal law affects the doctor's decision making. So, ex exempting from the doctors from such criminal prosecution will increase the decision making. So, critical decision making will be there. In this aspect, the patient care outcomes will be more. Right? And finally, so here, the exemption for harassment and fear. Yes, there is the possibility that this section can be used against doctors, medical practitioners to harass so there is a possibility that the practitioner will be having a fear that they will face the harassment of such criminal provisions. So this is clearly evident from the numbers. So that is also that. So these are the things which we have to highlight from the aspects of points favoring for exempting the doctors from criminal prosecution. So next we have to know about the points not in favor of exemption. So here... So I have to highlight few things. First thing is 
the occurrences of such criminal medical negligence is occurring. Yes, evidences are there. It is occurring. Yes. And apart from that, the mortality, that is, death because of such negligence is also there. Yes, it is mentioned that around 90,000 patients are died because of such medical negligence. Yes, occurrences of negligence is also there and also mortality is also is there. And apart from that, the doctor-patient relationship, there is a power imbalance. Yes, doctor is having a greater say when compared to the patients. And because of this imbalance, like we have to have something as a measure to bring up that. So here it is cited that the punishment, having a punishment for such medical negligence will bring a balance between such imbalance in the dynamics between the doctor and the patient and it makes the doctors accountable. Next we have an article related to yes, fiber. So exam point of view, we can expect some prelims related questions related to the, the Pegasus fiber and also the concept of zero click exploit. So previously there was a question in 2018 regarding the terms such as Vanakrai and Petya and uh, Eternal Blue. So similarly we can also expect some similar preliminary basic questions in the science and tech part in the upcoming examination. So that's why we are discussing this article. So coming to the context part. The Amnesty International conducted an uh, investigation. So recently, it conducted an in investigation and also it highlighted the, the important problem or allegation that the spyware, that is the Pegasus spyware was used by the state agencies to target the journalist in India. So here, it underlines the problem of privacy. The user privacy will be there. It is under threat. That's on the one side. And apart from that, it is affecting the freedom of speech and expression. So these two dimensions that we have to highlight. And apart from that, from the exam point of view, we have to know about the, the basic details about the spyware. So coming to the passes, yes, it is a spyware, a yeah, malicious spyware or malicious software developed by the Israeli company that is NS Vogue. So basic objective of this spyware is to the collect and transfer or access to any computer or network or any mobile communication devices without the consent of the user. So they will collect, they will access and collect the information and they will transfer the information from the particular device. So this is the objective of having this fiber. Now coming to the capabilities. So the remote installation is possible, which means the concept of zero click exploit, which means the intervention by the user is not at all required. So any click from the user is not at all needed. So that is the first aspect. Second aspect, it is having the capacity of extensive data access. So it can have the access to text messages, emails, photos, videos, contacts, call logs, GPS, microphone, even the encrypted messages. So extended variety, the variety of information or variety of data it can access is very high that is there and also finally it is having the powerful features such as it can activate even the the phone camera and microphones to record the audio and video without the user knowledge so these are some of the important capabilities so here i have i want to highlight few things so one is even without any intervention from the user, the installation is possible. First dimension. Second dimension, it can handle and it can transport variety of data and also vast amount of data that is possible. And finally, it can also activate the features like phone camera and microphone. So real-time data collection is also possible. So these are some of the important significant aspects that we have to Right. So coming to the controversy, so misused by the government and it was even uh, mentioned by the, the external agencies as well. And finally, it is raising the concern of intervening into the fundamental rights. And even the Supreme Court is also mentioned or expressed its concern about are using the such spider. Yes, the first aspect, the government is misusing or the government is using 
such spy verse to contain the dissent against God. So here there is an example. The recent example, the journalists were targeted. It is not the any non-state actor or any terrorist group or any external uh, extremist groups. So here journalists are getting targeted, which means it clearly shows that the 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 government's use of such spy verse to curb the dissent is visible. So that is the first aspect, and this is also highlighted by the external agencies such as Washington Post and Amnesty International. International's investigation also highlighted this access and this intervention by the government on journalists that was there. And finally, there is a problem of two things. One is privacy. Yes, the user privacy is getting affected. Yes, it is a fundamental right in the Indian constitution on one hand, but also one more important fundamental right that is the freedom of speech and expression is also getting affected, getting curbed by such interventions. So privacy and freedom of speech and expression, two things and two fundamental rights are getting affected. And even the Supreme Court also highlighted this problem, which means sensitizing or sensitizing to this problem is very high. So we have to sensitize this problem and it has to be seen as a serious concern because even the Supreme Court's involvement is also there and it also highlighted that it is a concern, right? So as a response, the center responded in such a way that it can't give any details. It refused to give a detailed affidavit to the Supreme Court because it cited this intervention as a national security concern. So the center, the government bypasses the, the judiciary's intervention by citing this as a national security. So this is also another problem, right? So that we have. So next we have to know about the, the concept of blast past exploits, right? So blast past exploit is also nothing but an example of zero click exploit. So here, this particular technique is used in the, uh, the Apple devices, so which is known for the security features. So this blast past technology uh, the Pegasus spy software are installed or having access to Apple devices exclusively. So here it is having two different phases. One is access phase, another one is installation. So access phase and installation. So here these two phases are done by using the vulnerabilities in both the home kits and the iMessage applications. So vulnerabilities in the equipment itself was used to assess the device and also to install the spy, right? In the first phase, that is access phase, that is home kit phase, the blast past exploit the weakness in the, the smart home platform to gain the initial access. Yes, access to the device will be done or happen through the this Apple smart home platform. And after that, in the installation phase, it uses iMessaging application to download and install the Pegasus spy. So here, the technical details, so access phase and the installation phase, the uses, the technology, the blast past technology uses the existing vulnerabilities in the, the device itself. Now let's try some prelims practice question. Coming to the first question, we are having a statements regarding the Kodam Kolam nuclear power plant in India. So it is the largest nuclear power plant. Yes, it is right. And also uh, it is made with the help of Russia. That is also right. So first statement is correct. Second statement, NPCIL, the nuclear power company of India Limited owns and operate the nuclear power plant. Yes, it is correct. Second statement is also correct. The reactors use, the reactors in the Kudankulam uses thorium. No, this is wrong. It is not thorium. It is uranium. As a few. So, third statement is wrong. So, coming to the options, which of the above statement is are correct? So, one and two. Option A is correct. Yes, the correct answer is A. Coming to the second question, consider the following statements. The first statement, the Recklessness and negligence was not a criminal offense in IPC. No, this is wrong because previously in the IPC we have two sections. One is 
section 304A and also we have the section 338. So these are the two sections which are relevant to this, uh, the criminal negligence. So first statement is wrong. Second statement, the death by rash can in general can attract up to seven years of imprisonment. Yes, the statement is correct. It used to attract seven years of imprisonment. So how many of the statements given above is are correct? First statement is wrong. Second statement is correct. So option B, only two statements. Yes, option B is right. So coming to the third question, consider the following statements. The capital adequacy ratio is the ratio of bank's capital. Yes, capital to the risk weighted asset. This ratio is what we call it as capital adequacy ratio. Yes, relation to the risk weighted asset and the current liabilities. Yes, first statement is right. Second statement, the risk weighted asset, that is the denominator, take into the account of credit risk, market risk and operational risk. Yes, it should be comprehensive. Then only we can able to come up with the, the rational number. So logically this is right. So second statement is correct. So coming to the options, which of the above statement is are correct? Both these statements are correct. So we are going with the option C, both 1 and 2. Yes, the correct option is C, both 1 and 2. Coming to the fourth question, consider the following statements regarding the uh, Pegasus spy web. It is developed and deployed by the NSO group, an Israeli cyber intelligence firm. Yes, this is right. Its operations relies on zero click exploit. Yes, it is also right. This is right. Enabling silent installation, yes, and comprehensive data extraction from the infected devices. Yes, second statement is also correct. It is having two, three dimensions. We have to check each and every dimensions individually. And finally, the Pegasus targets only Android devices. No, a recent attack that is by using the, the blast past technique, they also accessed the Apple devices as well. So third statement is wrong. So how many of the above given statement are correct? So only two. So option is Bombay. Yes, answer B. Only two statements are correct is right. Coming to the fourth question, consider the following statements regarding the, the zero click exploit in the context of cyber threats. They bypass traditional malware defenses. Yes. This current mechanism, zero click exploit, used to bypass the existing uh, traditional malware defenses, which is available against uh, the, the malicious activities such as phishing emails. So that is correct. Second statement, and this zero click exploit doesn't require any user interaction. So two parts, first statement, first part is also correct. Second part is also correct. So statement one is right. Their stealthy nature makes dete detection and mitigation difficult, often leaving victims unaware of the compromise. Yes, it is true. They exploit the vulnerabilities directly on the devices. Yes, here also uh, the two phases, the home kits vulnerability and then iMessaging application vulnerability in the uh, Apple device was used for launching the, uh, the spyware that is there. So the third statement is also correct. So how many of the above statements are correct? So all three statements are correct. So option C is right. Yes, as the C is correct. Now let's try one mains practice question. In the recent attack in the Rajouri Pooch region, indicates a new pattern in the evolving security challenge in the region. Analyze the reason for the change in the strategy of terrorists. So here we have to bring the the evolution point of view, that is the first aspect. And also we have to analyze the reason why there is the shift. Two dimensions we have to highlight. So in the introduction part, so try to mention the recent incident of December uh, 12 uh, ambush so that we get a, a clue to start the answer. So we can start with this mention of this recent attack. And in the body parts, we have to explain the evolving pattern. So changing dimensions of area and also changing dimensions of 
local supports and also we have to include the aspects of changing dimensions of support from China. Three dimensions we have to highlight for the evolution point of view. And for the recent point of view, what we have to do is they wanted to include more region into the political instability. That is there. And also, as a reason, we have to highlight the uh, the geographical and uh, climate factors so that year-round attack is possible. And also, so creating an uh, certainty and uh, in the uh, combat force. Because if the attack is happening in two different regions, the forces will be sparsed in the different uh, regions so that it will create uncertainty to combat the militant activity. So uncertainty will be there. And finally, the militant activities, the militant groups can able to retain the political instability in the region. So coming to the conclusion, so write down the solution to this problem focusing on upholding the human rights and revocation of the statehoods. So this can be a possible answer. That's the end of the discussion. Thanks for watching. Do like, share and comment the video. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you all.